What's going on everybody? Welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to be doing the long requested hairstyle breakdown of TikTok's famous Vinny Hacker. From top to bottom, we're gonna be going over things like his hair type, his hair texture, condition, how he styles it, and of course, the requirements necessary if you were looking to get this haircut for yourself. First of all, welcome to Jesse's Barbershop. If you're new here, my name is Jesse, and I'm a professional hairstylist that uh, neglects his real life clients in order to make these videos for you guys. So if you're into the men's hair culture, tips, tricks, tutorials, or are just looking for a resource to have at your disposal as you go throughout your hair growth journey, consider hitting that subscribe button and checking out our free Discord server. Links and details to that will be in the description as well as at the end of this video. But anyways, on to the video. I should seriously stop ignoring all my clients, but negligence is bliss as they say. If you've been here before, you may notice that I've changed up the format for my hairstyle breakdowns a little bit, but it's still broken up into three parts. The first of which is going to be an overview of the hairstyle. And yes, this sucks because with this change, I can no longer make my hairy analysis joke, um, but it is going to be much more concise and accurate. So this is better. Part two, we're gonna be going over everything that you need to know about his hair type, like its coarseness, its density, its texture, condition, curl pattern, etc. So that you can take that information and reference it to your hair type, which is going to be important if you're looking to get this haircut for yourself, which we'll talk about later on. And part three is going to be the requirements necessary if you were looking to get this haircut for yourself. And of course, what to tell your barber when you're sitting in the chair, uh, ready to try on this new look. So without further ado, everybody, let's dive into the first hair breakdown of 2020. 22 Vinny Hacker. All right, so first thing, we're just gonna do an overview of the hairstyle, kind of go over some reference photos to see what it is that we're actually looking at. So we're gonna go with the Hacker images. I was not on his Instagram. Okay, so here's what I like to do. When trying to figure out a hairstyle, the first thing that I do is just kind of look visually and point out things that I'm noticing about the hairstyle. So we're gonna scroll through some of these photos and just do that. So first thing I'm noticing is there's a lot of texture and a lot of movement. And right off the bat, I'm noticing it looks to be quite fine hair, but we're gonna talk about that in a second. The reason I say that is noticing the separation between the curls or waves is indicative of somebody with a slightly finer hair type. And of course, the fact that it looks like there's not a lot of volume to towards the top, right? Like Vinny and I have the same top of the head, but my hair naturally just has volume because I have so much more hair, whereas his looks like it kind of sits flat. Again, you can see in this photo here, again, lots of movement, lots of texture. In a lot of these photos, especially the ones where he has longer hair, which I personally like better, you can see that a lot of the weight is towards the side of his head as opposed to the top of his head, like this one, for example. There's not a lot of volume in hair towards the top. A lot of the emphasis is on the exterior and around the sides. This I think is a more standard or common haircut for this hair type. I think this is a really good length and a good hairstyle. Um, what is this? Why? Well, you can see his hair again, not a lot of volume, uh, a lot of weight towards the perimeter of his head. So yeah, I think we got a good sense of uh, kind of the general look um, of his hair. And what's interesting is kind of reminds me of this guy. Yeah, like this or even like this guy who I came across the other day. Didn't know he existed. So what's interesting about this is clearly they have a very different hair type, but when it comes to the end product or like the final style, the actual look, you'll notice it looks very, very similar. So this just goes to show if you're looking to get this hairstyle and you don't have the exact same hair type as Vinny Hacker, that's totally fine. In most cases, what it'll be is just the approach the hairstyles will take to actually cutting the hair and creating the shape will be very different depending on your hair type. But as you can see, uh, you don't need uh, the exact same hair type in order to achieve a similar look to this. So in terms of the odds of somebody being able to achieve this hair type, the fact that it spans over multiple different hair types is a good sign for you. But like I said, I think we got a good sense of the general look that we're gonna be going for. So I think what we'll do now is go into part two, which is hair type and styling. So when it comes to hair type, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this initial photo that we saw of Vinnie Hacker and also how I pointed out that it looked like he had finer hair. 
And this is gonna be the first teaching point of the video. A lot of you guys may already know this, but when we're referring to the fineness of hair, we're referring to the coarseness of the hair. Coarseness being the diameter of each individual strand. So not all hair is the same, even as much as it coming down to the size and diameter of each individual strand. Somebody like me who has Asian genetics and a mom with really, really coarse hair, my individual strands would be considered coarse, quite thick, you can feel them, and they sit up on top of each other, uh, creating lots of volume. Somebody with a fine coarseness of hair each individual hair strand will have a smaller diameter resulting in a kind of more softer less bulky appearance when all that hair is sitting on top of each other right so with this reference photo and of course the photos that we went through earlier I'm going to deduce that he does have a finer hair type and then the other metric we'll use is called density which is the number of follicles so how many hairs you have per square inch so there's two factors when it comes to kind of like the bulk or like size of hair there's the coarseness how thick the strands are and then the the density, how many strands you have. Imagine a forest with a lot of trees versus a forest with few trees. There's a lot more space to walk through the trees uh, in the sparse forest, which is kind of, I don't know, I don't know if this analogy is gonna work, but towards the scalp, that's kind of where we look for things. If there's somebody with really dense hair, let's say you're like a little flea, with somebody with dense hair, it'll be hard to navigate through the individual strands. If you're somebody with fine hair, a flea will be able to run around and do acrobatics and stuff. But anyways, fine coarseness, and I would also wager that it's a fine finer density as well. Like I said, especially towards the top, if there was more hair there, you would see just naturally a little bit more volume towards the top and the crown. And this is a very typical hair type to have. If it's like blonde or light brown, it'll typically be closer to the finer end of the spectrum than the coarser end of the spectrum. And an average head of hair would be considered a medium density, whereas this I would wager is a little bit closer to the sparser side, but not like balding sparse, just like not quite the normal amount of density or more. But that's really good news because this is a very cool hairstyle that's very popular, very trendy, but is achievable by somebody with finer coarseness and even a lower density. And those are two issues that a lot of people struggle with finding a hairstyle that works for them because they feel like they can't get that volume and luxuriousness of kind of like longer volumized flowy hair. They'll typically feel like they have to stick with shorter hair or be hesitant to try these kind of like medium to longer hairstyles, but this guy's done it. So it's probably a good sign for you if you have this hair type. And of course, the next thing we'll touch on is the curl pattern. So curl pattern refers to the actually the way that your hair grows out of your scalp if let's say my fist is the bulb right this is the scalp if your hair goes from bulb out your scalp straight up you're gonna have straight hair but if your hair grows out of your scalp at an angle what will happen is it'll grow and I don't know maybe just like as it passes through the scalp actually curls like this. So depending on the angle that the hair is growing out of the bulb through the scalp will determine the curl pattern does that make sense it is important to understand your curl pattern because in this hairstyle specifically, there is a lot of movement and texture. As you can see, it's not like curly, but he does have enough natural movement to actually get some wave in there. Oh, and for those who like the alphanumeric curl pattern chart, I don't know, I'd guess he's probably between 2B and 2C in terms of curl pattern. But that's important to understand because the idea behind this section is for you to understand his hair type so that you can reference it to your hair type to see if this is something or something similar would be achievable for you. To find out what your curl pattern is, you can use one of those charts and basically just look at your hair and see how many S's your hair makes. You know, straightish wavy hair will make like kind of like long flowy S's and curlier hair will make lots of tighter S's. But with that being said, especially a hairstyle like this or like this, you don't necessarily need curly hair. The only thing you need is just not perfectly straight hair. So if you have a little bit of natural movement to your hair, this should be achievable. What it'll determine is how much styling or effort you have to put into achieving this look. So in terms of styling, I'm aware that a lot of people actually just have this hair type naturally. And if you have uh, a good amount of natural wave to this, if you get your hair cut like this and then grow it out, uh, you should be able to achieve something similar just naturally. But you're gonna start running into issues if you have a slightly less prominent curl pattern, like, like 2A would be a little bit sketchy. So what you'd have to do is implement techniques and product that will help you bring out those curls and give your hair as much movement and texture as possible. So things like curl cream and a scrunch dry technique that I've featured on my channel, depending on the length, things like gritty or matte paste towards the scalp to kind of help separate the roots a little bit to give it that texture. And of course, if you've got really fine hair, but I mean, also just in general, volumizing or texturizing powder is fantastic. And of course, how you style it is going to depend on your hair type. But like I said, look into those products and techniques if your hair doesn't naturally just fall um, like Vinny Hackers, but um, a lot of people's will. So keep that in mind. All right, and for part three, and to wrap things up here, we're gonna be talking about the requirements necessary, as well as what to tell your barber if you were sitting in the chair looking to get this haircut for yourself. 
So before we get into the details of that, as always, the best thing you can do, and every hairstylist ever will agree with this, is bring in pictures of what you like. Not because a picture will magically give your hairstylist the ability to give you that exact cut, but it'll give us a sense of what you are looking for. And of course, if it's even possible for your hair type, because if it's not, what a good stylist will do is say, look, this is why we can't achieve this. Here's something similar that might work as well. So keep that in mind. Pictures and communication are step one. The next thing you wanna do is make sure you've decided on which of his hairstyles you actually want because there's likely a specific structure and length that you like. Make sure you have that clear in your mind so your hairstylist knows how long to leave your hair if you're going for a longer hairstyle, for example. But more specifically, uh, we're gonna do something that I recommend doing anytime you're looking for hair inspiration, but that is point out the things that you like about the hair. Because when you say, for example, uh, with this haircut, like I like the length towards the back. I want it this long, right? You don't know what that means. You just know what you want. A hairstylist will understand, okay, well, first of all, do you have enough length for that? If you do, okay, how much do I have to take off based on your hair type and your curl pattern in order to give it this desired length? Or another one is, oh, I like the separation between his curls. I like the shape of this hairstyle, how the weight is on the side of his head and not the top. I don't like the shape of this hairstyle. I don't like how it's more rounded, right? That all helps a hairstylist because the difference between cutting for this look as opposed to this look is like we're literally cutting your hair at different angles and at different lengths in order to achieve different looks. So just start calling things out. No hairstylist worth their weight is gonna be like, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about because we understand that you don't know the technical things that are necessary in order to achieve these. Your superpower as a client sitting in a chair is just communicating and articulating what it is visually you like about this hair. And then it's the hairstylist's job to say, okay, I get what you're saying. I'm going to use the techniques that I've learned and trained for in order to give you that look. Does that make sense? And I guess the last piece of advice, if you're looking to go for a longer hairstyle like this, and especially if you've never done it before, don't be afraid to tell your barber not to take length off. Sometimes it is necessary for shaping, but realistically, there's a lot of hairstyles can do with half an inch or a quarter of an inch in terms of shaping to kind of freshen things up and give you that look without sacrificing too much length. So if you are looking for a longer hairstyle, a lot of times people are hesitant to say they want to leave length because they, you know, you're going to a hairstyles, so you feel like you should be getting your hair cut. But the idea is you're not just going to get your hair cut, you're going to achieve a certain look. And if that certain look requires length being left, a good hairstylist will understand that and do whatever he needs to do or she needs to do in order to uh, achieve it for you. Hopefully that makes sense guys and hopefully you got something out of this. I feel like it's been like a year since I've done one of these celebrity hair breakdowns but uh, you guys keep asking for them and if you guys find value in them I'll keep them coming but make sure you let me know by dropping a like and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video we do have an entirely free discord server where if you are on your hair growth journey or just want a community to be able to ask questions and engage and share pictures it's a really cool place for that we got a lot of really good guys in there and of course if you're watching this and you're active in the discord server I really really appreciate you you know that but yeah check it out it's completely free first link down in the description and if you haven't subscribed yet and you like this type of video you're into the men's hair or youtube niche make sure you hit that subscribe button it really really helps with the channel i got some big plans i'm very motivated to continue making videos for you guys throughout the rest of this year so if you haven't and you want to stick around hit that subscribe button and we'll hopefully see everybody in the next video